What's going on everybody? This is Jen catching you on DTWJ representing NJ all day. Looking tired as anything. Oof, because I have been at it since like 9 o'clock this morning and I stopped working around 8 o'clock. Yeah, 8 o'clock this evening. So that's like 12 hours right there. It's literally 12 midnight on the dot. Uh, so... I can't believe that I'm still up. I'm working on going to bed. It's just been so hard. And you know something? I love you. Marie Moore, I just had to shout you out. I've got to shout you out in this video and hashtag you in this video and even put it up on your fan page so you could see it and you know that I made it for you. Um, <laughs> well, in response to your um, reading for this week, for us fabulous crabs. Ah, by the way, read my shirt. Check it out. Don't mess with a crabby Jersey girl. This is not the first time that I have shouted out my own t-shirt on a vlog, on a vloggity. Oh yeah. So I figured I would go ahead and do that again. <laughs> I have a lot of fun wearing this thing because people look at me and uh, they see that, you know, I'm smiling. I'm happy. I have like this, um, not necessarily jovial, because I think that's kind of fake, <laughs> but like this, um, you know, optimistic and kind and gentle demeanor. You know, I'm, I'm really nice. I am until you mess with me. Um, <laughs> that's, I love this shirt. And somebody reads that, like, because you, you know how, like, when you're talking to somebody and they're looking at your shirt because they see that it says something and they're just, like, trying to read your shirt? And this one lady at a uh, at a deli, uh, she owns her own business, and I love going to her deli because her cooking is phenomenal. It's just freaking amazing. Um, and she, um, we always end up having really good conversation. You know, it's always light. It's always nice. You know, because I really, you know, I'm I'm a foodie. I'm really into food. I love cooking. You know, so I like having conversations like that. Um, so I'm always really happy and optimistic and, you know, sometimes bubbly. Um, and she looks at my shirt and she's reading it and like she just for like a split second had this look on her face like, you know, like she was confused or something. And I just thought that was so funny. Oh, but anyway, uh, your reading totally makes sense for this week. And I have to tell you that this is something that I've been struggling with now for... Um, well, good question. Like maybe the past six years or so, six, seven years, um, because that's when I decided to become self-employed. You know, basically when the uh, recession had hit. Now, uh, I know that that sounds like, you know, most people's situations, but, you know, career-wise in my background, I've always been into sales, customer service, marketing, consulting, uh, that sort of thing. And most of the jobs that I've had were commission only. So it's almost as if, you know, I was self-employed, despite the fact that, you know, I was working for some other company, because uh, that's basically how I got paid. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty much used to that. Um, so it wasn't necessarily like a, a desperate move for me. It was an easy transition. Um, but since then, I've kind of found that there's a bit of a power struggle happening. And I think, you know, it's mainly with me. Because, like, I do, and I will take responsibility for that. Um, because I do tend to tell my mom that I love her very much. Well, how, how do you not tell your mom you love her? Um, and then, you know, I'm here for her if she needs me, et cetera, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. You know, because I'm here all the time. I work from home now. Um, but it's getting to the point where it's, could you do this? Could you do, I need you. I need. Okay. Okay. All right. And it would just drive me totally berserker. But I set myself up for that because I said, Mom, anytime that you need me, just ask. I'm here. You know, um, so I think in a way I kind of did set myself up for that. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, I was, I was like that mainly because of the uh, hip replacement uh, surgery she got last year during March. Uh, yeah, so, oh. you know, like, I'm, I'm really all about her recovery. I want her to be okay. Um, so that's the reason why 
I've been like that and the situation has been like that. Um, but now it's gotten to the point where like, you know, she's recovered, she's doing better. Okay. <laughs> she can handle most things by herself. <sighs> you know, <laughs> I'm like, mom, I have to work. You don't understand. She's like, Jen, make up my mind for me. Which one is it? I'm like, it's not that simple. <laughs> it is not that simple. I wanted to be around for you and take care of you because, well, you know, you're recovering from surgery and you're retiring. You need me. And now it's gotten to the point where it's like, well, she's okay now. She doesn't really need me anymore. I can, you know, get back to work completely full time and not just do it part time. And I think, you know, maybe I should have worded it that way. And I just like kind of forgot to because like my crabbiness got the best of me, <laughs> you know. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah, so where was I going with this? I am exhausted. I got to the point where now, thankfully, I'm back to, you know, putting in my, like, 12-hour days. So I'm really happy about that. I know that, you know, what I do for a living, it just in general, being self-employed is a lot of work. A lot more so than, you know, just collecting a paycheck for doing all these menial tasks, you know, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I really missed it. I really missed, you know, working hard, you know, putting in long stretches. That's kind of what I really love to do. And you're absolutely right on and spot on about that, about us crabs is we really do love to work hard. We do. Um, that's something that'll never leave me no matter what. And, uh, it's, I think the main reason why I work so hard is uh, changing. Well, it had changed. Um, when I was in my 20s, it was money and results driven. Uh, it's still results driven, but more so toward purpose than money. I'm actually, you know, really starting to find my niche and where I belong, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. But like I'm kind of transitioning into it um, very slowly, but it's happening. I'm, you know, discovering more and more why uh, I'm passionate about video editing and production um, as opposed to marketing. And yeah, marketing, I have a strong background in that. I'm talking 10 plus years now. Uh, so it's something that's probably never going to leave me, which is good. Uh, because if you're going to make it doing anything in this world, you have to have those skills. Um, but to be totally honest, my main passion is like the arts, you know, video editing and production, uh, maybe somewhat photography, music, things like poetry. I am, I've always been into those things and I've always struggled to find a way to try to monetize that, you know, back before social media and while I was like in the thick of my career, anytime that I ever thought of like possibly, you know, delving into it, it would be on my free time if I had it. Uh, it would be for the joy of it. I wouldn't be putting my work out there too much. Um, a little bit, yeah. You know, I've submitted some things to my local newspaper, poems and things like that, which was awesome, but I never really stepped beyond that. And I think in a way I was kind of suppressing myself because I thought, you know, I was so convinced that if I didn't have like such a big reach, you know, like I do now, um, I wouldn't be able to express anything that I am passionate about and try to make a living from it. Um, you know, it just, it seems like selfish to say that, but well, it's the truth. I mean, it's best to, you know, do with your life what you are passionate about or you risk doing nothing at all. And that is a quote. I have it hanging right up there. So I look at it every day and I remind myself of that. Let me show you. Ugh, it's right here. I don't know if you can read it. It says, we must absolutely do what we love or we run the risk of doing nothing at all and i really love the star that's hanging from it it's so cute you're a little star you know it's really endearing it's adorable um so i keep it um unlike the the sill of my window where like uh, there are some brackets where like some old thing was hanging and it's not anymore so it's like a convenient spot to put other stuff 
Um, so that's kind of what I do. Like I, I like hanging little things around instead of creating like this big, boring, blocky vision board. I'd rather just hang things around or decorate my uh, living space in such a way that inspires me. And uh, that always keeps me going. And um, yeah, I'm just going to continue doing that learning. Um, I didn't go to school for it. Uh, editing and production. It's just something that I'm very passionate about and that I love doing. Um, the editing part is a headache, I'm not gonna lie, but once once you've rendered it and it's become like a full production, it looks incredible and you're just like, this is what the headache was for and it is totally worth it, you know? And just, just seeing that every single time puts a huge smile on my face and it makes me feel really good about the fact that I could create something, that I could produce something or reproduce something, you know, should the copyrights on it allow. Um, and that always feels good to do, to be able to do that. It's just, I, I love creating things. You know, it's, it's so funny because in monotheistic religions, it is said that, you know, God and or man is the creator, not the woman. But truth of the matter is, is I'm actually happiest when I create. And um, that's something that I've been pursuing now for the past six years, almost seven. Um, so, yeah, I'm, it's something that I'm very passionate about. I'm still figuring out ways to get paid doing it. Not that I have never gotten paid doing it. I have. Um, but I'm still kind of like going through the, the trudges, the mud. You know, I'm going through my training and I'm trying to figure it out uh, and just, you know, do with what I have, you know, do the best that I can. I don't always have the money to put toward like the, the biggest and the best um, softwares that you can use with pr editing and production, but um, that's okay. You know, like as long as you work with what you have and you have a passion for what you're doing, your creativity shows despite, you know, the lack. I really don't think there is a lack, you know, all those uh, fancy softwares that are out there are just for show and yeah they cut they get you a ton of views and blah 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 but question is say you're actually creating educational material for people you know to sell to them does it look right does it look like a presentation does it look like something that is teachable does it look professional does it look like something that somebody can learn from you know, um, you have to, to like focus on the concept first, you know, that being the niche, you know, some people call it a niche. I look at the project and I see it as a concept, like, okay, what is the concept of the video? Educating somebody, um, how to do something, um, going through a tutorial. Okay. That's the concept. Good. Now I know how I can design it. It could be simple. It could be sleek so it's understood, uh, but also interactive so it's not boring and people aren't sleeping behind the screen. <laughs> so it's it's something, you know, that that I uh, always consider before I begin uh, pulling together material, shooting it myself, um, and uh, editing it and finally putting it out there, you know, the final rendered product is what is the concept? Am I giving somebody a tutorial? Am I sitting here and talking about myself and my personal story, which is a vlog? Um, <clears throat> you know, every single video has a different style editing wise. And I think that's, that's what creates the niche is the concept. You have to have a vision for the concept. I have gone on way long, haven't I? <laughs> anyway, um, just want to give you a big shout out and let you know that I really appreciate your videos and your readings that you do for me and all of us fabulous crabs every single week, every single month. I truly do appreciate it because I find a lot of value in the things that you say. You're very straightforward. You have an awesome sense of humor. You're funny as shit. It's awesome. Uh, I, I love it. You know, you're so like straightforward to the point, but in a funny way, you know, it's, it's kind of like uh, what I was talking about with, um, <clears throat> um, the concept of a tutorial video, uh, obviously, you know, the layout of it while editing is simple enough to put the message forward, but making it a little bit fun so that I'm not falling asleep behind the screen. <sighs> 
<laughs> you know, <laughs> you're just awesome. You know what you're doing. You know your stuff. It's great. I love it. Uh, keep up the good work too, by the way. I think that's, uh, I think that's fabulous. I do. From one fabulous to another. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm out for now. I got to get some rest. I'm exhausted. Tomorrow's another day. I got to get back on it. Uh, it's been Jack catching you on DTWJ. Keep it real as always, everybody. Thank you for watching. Uh, Marie Moore, thank you again for everything. You guys, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys on the next one.